Okay, this is the second video in the installment of Rational Exponents. This is still working on 6.4. Uh, we have a couple more rules to kind of get through in this video. We should finish up all of our rules here. Uh, and then the next video we'll be just talking about just more problems and kind of the harder concepts of this section. Uh, this video is going to be kind of tough. So please make sure you're taking notes. Uh, following along, doing the problems yourself, hitting pause, asking for help in class if you get to this. Uh, you, you will need to make sure we understand this before you get on to the next video. So what we need to do first is talk about what we call the product rule. Uh, this is the rule of exponents. So what rules of exponents mean is I have a generic rule that happens to work for all of these problems that look the same. So if I have a, time, a to the b times, sorry, a to the c, then that's going to be a to the b plus c. Remember, we, we've already done this before anyway, but if I have two of the same variables and different exponents, I add them, okay? So remember, a squared times a squared was equal to a to the 4. That's, I know it's 2 times 2 also equals 4, but if I have a to the 1 times a to the 2, that gives me a to the 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, not one times two. You multiply the x the uh, variables here, but you add the exponents. That's what the rule says. And a times a is really a. We just keep it the same there. Okay, so what we do up here on these examples is this. Boom. You ready? Here we go. I am going to look at this expression here, this monomial, and I'm multiplying it by that monomial. Well, what does this monomial have for a coefficient? That's a one. So one times three is three. Now I have some n's. I have one n here and one n here. So one plus one is two. Or you can say, how many total n's do I have? Well, I have two. How many total m's do I have? Three here, three here, that makes six, right? Three plus three is six. And then how many p's? Three and two, that gives me five. Three plus two is five. And that's, that's it. That's all we're doing. It's gonna be a little harder, but that's pretty much it for the multiplying section of your paper. Uh, let's do um, this one here because we got to talk about another property that we have. We have a property, it's called negative exponents. The reason why we have it in this problem is because I see the negative 4 right there, I want to mention it. So negative exponents, what this means is if I have a variable to a negative power, then in order to make this positive, okay, I need to flip it. Basically I'm taking it and I'm putting it on its opposite area. So this is in the numerator. So in order to make the variable positive or the exponent positive, I have to flip that technical fraction. But what would happen is if I have the same variable in the denominator, but it's negative now? Well, again, I'm going to flip it. Okay, this is technically over one, right? So you see that there's a flip here. There's a flip here. Okay, we need to understand that I have a negative frac or negative exponent. I need to flip in order to finish it. Okay, I can never, ever, 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 ever leave exponents positive. Plus it says, should only contain positive exponents. I need to make them positive. So, monomial, monomial. Four times one is four. X, one, X to the one power, right? Plus the four is X to the five. I don't have any more Z's, so that's still a two. And I don't have any more y's to kind of convert with this negative 4, but I need to make this positive. Need to make positive. And in order to make it positive, this notes over here says I have to flip it. So now I have y to the 4 in my denominator, and that's my final answer. Okay? That is how you finish a negative exponent. You have to put it, if it's in the numerator, put it in the denominator. If it's in the denominator, put it in the numerator, and then that'll make this positive value. Okay, let's go on to some more examples. Let's do this one here. Again, monomial, monomial, 4 times 4 is 16, m to the negative 1, m to the 4. If I add them, what do I get? m to the 3, 4 minus 1 is 3, n to the 3, n to the negative 2. Add them, you get n to the 1. Now, I don't have any more p's to combine with this, so this can't be done. I can't be like, huh, that's my answer, man. You can't do that. Okay, that's no bueno. 
all right this negative 2 right here has to be put in your denominator so it's p to the 2 now I can write it as n or n to the 1 it doesn't really matter but this is your answer this is what it is this is how we do it right there okay let's go do some more problems now it looks like I have three monomials which I do boom boom and one more three times two six times three eighteen x to the three x to the three that's x to the six and then x to the two is x to the eight All right three plus three plus two is eight z's i have two and two which make four and then i don't oh i'm sorry i forgot this z over here that's one more so this is a five so let me erase that so z to the five there forgot about that little single one there uh, and then I don't have any more y's to kind of mess with this negative 4, so that has to be in my denominator. So this is your answer. Again, here's two more problems. You guys can do them and then hit play. This one here, I have 4 times 1 times 4 is 16. I have 2x's, 6x's, and then minus 1, so that's 5. I have 2y's and 4y's, that's 6y's. And then I have a four Z's and then three more Z's. That makes seven Z's. Nothing on the bottom. Boom, you're done. Number six, two times three is six. I have one Q and negative three Q's. So that means I have negative two Q's, which have to go on the bottom because now it's positive. I have one R and negative three R's. So that means I have negative two R's, which needs to go on the bottom. Then I have three p's and one negative, so that means p squared is up top, it stays there because it is positive. You, sir, are done. Okay, there we go, let's go on to the next section here. Okay, this is the next section. As you notice now we have fractions. We love fractions. I know it probably you know, haunts our dreams that we have fractions, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so we have another rule that we need to talk about. It is what we call the quotient rule. Hopefully I spelled quotient right. I think I did, but I teach math for a reason. So, quotient rule says that if I have a to the b divided by a to the c, then I get a to the b minus c. I just subtract powers. Remember, multiplying we added. Now in division, we're going to subtract. Remember, they're opposite kind of... I'm not saying they're exactly opposite operations, but they're pretty close. All right, we always refer to addition and multiplication are kind of opposites. So, okay, so quotient rule there. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to look at these powers and I want to subtract them. So there's two ways to do it. I'll go through both ways. So I'm going to kind of delete this. Hopefully this is in your notes. So there's two ways. I'm going to do it the first way by the definition. What that means by definition is means I'm going to use that rule that we just wrote down, right? The quotient rule. So what it means is because I have variables, well, first let's do it this way. Um, 2 divided by 1, I can't reduce 2 and 1, so that's going to stay in my numerator, okay? b to the negative 3 and b to the 1. The rule says that I take b to the negative 3 and minus 1 from it, okay? I take the top minus the bottom, so top minus bottom. Then I get c to the negative or c to the 4 and b and c to the 2 on the bottom so that's c to the 4 minus 2 which equals 2 to the b or I'm sorry 2b to the negative 4 c to the 2 right negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 4 minus 2 is 2 what is this this is a negative what does that mean that means that I can put that in my denominator to get my answer so this is my answer so this is by the definition the second way we can do it is kind of like um, it seems basic, but for some of you this might make more sense. I'm not sure. Um, so let me erase uh, what's already written there on the problem. So again, I want to do it the same way. Um, it's still 2 over 1. That's still 2. Okay. But then I want to move all of my negative exponents to the opposite side of the fraction. So this is negative, so that means it drops down, right? Because it's negative and make the positive, it drops. So it's b to the 3 and b to the 1. Now I have um, 4 c's and 2 c's. So 4 c's technically are on top and 2 are on the bottom. So how many do they have in common? They have 2 of them in common. And because this is bigger, so let's think about this. I have c, 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 c. I have 4 of them over c, c. Well, how many do they have in common? One, two. So that means I have two left on top. Okay, two left on top. Over, and then 
B to the 3 and B to the 1. How many do they have total? B to the 4. That's another way to do it. Um, it's up to you which way you want to do it, but I'm going to kind of use both ways, and you kind of just got to make sure you're doing the right answers at the end. I'll probably use this way more so, um, but I might use this way too. I'm not sure. I just got to check. All right, let's go on to some more problems because that's really how we're going to do it. Okay, uh, this one here. First way is by definition. Remember, it means I'm going to actually um, subtract them. So this is a 1, so that's still a 1 third. Okay, uh, negative 4 minus 4. So m to the negative 4 minus 4. n to the negative 4. That doesn't change because there's no n's on the bottom. And then p to the 2 minus 2. Which gives me 1 m to the negative 8 n to the negative 4, and then p to the 0, all of it over 3. Well, what, do, what is now my answer? This is negative, this drops. This is negative, this drops. So my denominator is 3, m to the 8, n to the 4. That 1 is still up there. Now, I don't know if we've mentioned this this trimester or not, um, or this year or not, but anything to the 0 power, anything raised to the zero equals one okay anything raised to the zero equals one so this is one that just goes away I don't even need to write it anymore it just goes away because one times one is just one so it stays there so this is your answer there for eight that was pretty simple that wasn't that bad hopefully all right let's look at this one here uh, this will be the last one and then you guys can do two more as, as examples so by definition I'm gonna subtract so look at my numbers first one third can't reduce them one third y to the 1, which is 1 up here, minus 2, x to the 2 minus, but now it's 2 minus the negative 2, right? So it's 2 minus negative 2. And then z, which is 2 minus 2 as well, which is equal to y to the negative 1, with the 1 still up front, x to the 4, because 2 change change, right? 2 negatives in a row make a positive, 2 plus 2 is 4. And then z to the 0, all of that over 3. The y drops because it's negative, so it's x to the 4 over 3y. Remember, zero, z to the 0 power is gone, that doesn't matter. That is your final answer. All right, all righty then. The second way um, on this particular problem would be this. So let me erase what's up there real quick. Okay, would be to just move all of the negatives to the top or bottom depending upon what is the opposite. So this would be y x squared x squared z squared over 3 y squared z squared. I moved this up. Now it's combined stuff. Okay, so I have y's in common. One of them gets crossed out, so that remains one on the bottom. Three is still there. Z's on top, z's on the bottom, they're exactly the same, so they cross out. And then what do I have left on top? I have an x to the 4. Because 2 plus 2 is 4. That is your answer. Here's two more examples. You guys can work on these. And then uh, hit play. So number 10, your answer is going to be x to the 4, y over 3. Uh, because the only thing that can happen is this has to go up. Number 11, 3 halves cannot reduce. So it's 3 halves. Uh, what happens then to my other variables? Well, I have a y left on the bottom. I have an X left on the bottom, and I have a Z left on the bottom. So it's 3 all over 2 XYZ or YXZ or ZXY. doesn't matter the order. It's fine. So there's your answers there. Okay. Let's go on to oof, the next example here, the next type. Okay. This is the last section for this video. Um, this is probably going to be a little more complicated. And again, the next video is going to like encompass it all. Okay. So we'll do a couple examples here. Um, I don't know if I'll give you much work to practice, but you can practice as you go through the video. What I want to do first, and remember we talked about in the last video, this needs to be multiplied times all of that, because remember it's like the distribution property. Where is this one going? Well, that's technically a 1, right? So let's rewrite this. a to the 4, b to the negative 1, c to the 2, times 2 to the negative 4, because 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. I get a to the negative 12, b to the 12, c to the negative 16 times a squared c to the negative 3. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, okay? So when we get to this, it might be more helpful 
if we kind of move all the negatives to the opposite side of the fraction first, maybe that'll help us uh, finish it out. So let's do that. So I'm going to move negatives to the bottom. So that's b to the 1. Uh, I have a 2 to the negative 4, which means a 4 down below. I have an a to the 12. I have a c to the 16. And I have another c to the 3. I think I covered all of them. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK. Everything else stays on top. That is positive. c squared, b to the 12, a to the 2. All right. This is going to be great. Now let's start canceling if we can. Um, or you can subtract, right? So a's are 4 minus 12 is negative 8. So that means I have 8 more left on the bottom. Think about where you have more a's at. You have more a's on the bottom. Therefore, you have to leave them. But then I have a 2 here, right? So this doesn't actually make it an 8. It actually is going to make it a 6. OK, it's going to make it a 6. Um, then let's look at our b's. I have a 12 on top and a 1 on the bottom. So that means I have 11 on top because 12 minus 1 is 11. And then I have C's. How many do I have on the bottom? That's actually 19. And I have 2 on top. So that's actually 17 left on the bottom. And then I have the 2 to the 4 here. I can't leave it like that. It's not my answer. So my answer is B to the 11 over A to the 6, C to the 17. But what did I do about 2 to the 4? We'll plug this in your calculator, 2 carat 4, that should give you 16. And that is your final answer. Okay, let's look at this one here. This, All of this is now in parentheses with raised to the fourth power. So I want to distribute that 4 through to everything. That includes the numbers that are there. So let's rewrite it. 2 to the 4, h to the 12, j to the negative 4, times h to the negative 16, j to the 12, k to the negative 4. Now let's put these positive. Let's come on and make it easier. Uh, so that's 2 to the 4, h to the 12. Everything else is negative, so it goes below. j to the 4, h to the 16, j to the 12, k to the 4. Okay, Everything's positive now. So 2 to the 4, we said in the last problem, that was 16. I have 12 H's on top, 16 on the bottom, so that means I have 4 left on the bottom because this is bigger. 12, 16 minus 12 is bigger. Uh, 16 minus 12 is 4, and 16 is bigger. That's why it's on the bottom. How many J's do I have on the bottom? That's 16. And how many K's do I have left on the bottom? 4 because I don't have anything left on top to cancel. So there's your answer there. Okay, let's do 19. Well, Think about the 4 as the distribution property. Well, it's the same thing. It still distributes here, but guess what? It also distributes to every exponent in the denominator. So let's rewrite it. We have a to the negative 8, b to the 12, c to the 12, over 2 to the 4, c to the negative 16. Now let's flip negatives and make them all positive. I just like positive numbers. They're so like nice and warm and, and cuddly. Uh, so b to the 12, c to the 12, the c to the negative 16 pops up. The a to the 8 now is on the bottom because it's now positive, and the 2 to the 4 is still there. Now let's cancel things out if we can. Um, b is on top, can't do anything with, so b to the 12. 16 and 12 make 28, so c to the 28. Over 2 to the 4 is 16, and then a to the 8 is in your denominator because I can't cancel anything out. Let's do this last problem here and see where we're at. Um, so let's multiply, 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 and then multiply again. So that gives me 2 to the 4. Man, there's a lot of 2 to the 4s here. k to the 4, h to the 12, j to the negative 8, over 2, h to the negative 2. Let's move things, flip them, flip them if we need them. So 2 to the 4, k to the 4, h to the 12, h to the 2, over 2, j to the 8. I flipped what was negative and put it on the opposite sides of the fraction. Now let's combine. 2 to the 4 is 16. k's can't do anything with. k to the 4. Uh, h's 12 and 2 make 14 over 2 j to the 8. Can't do anything with the j's. 16 and 2 becomes an 8. So your answer, 8 k to the 4. h to the 14 over j to the 8. There's your answer there. All right, this wraps up this video. If you need help, please watch the next one. If you need help on the previous stuff, please go back. Uh, but this concludes your second video in 6.4.